Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, we're going to continue with our first person shooter by adding a couple GUI elements. The first thing we're going to work on in this video is the ammo GUI you see in the bottom right hand corner. And then next, we'll take a look at the health bar. So with this ammo GUI, every time I click to fire a bullet, it keeps track of how many bullets I have left. And it also keeps track of the total number of bullets I have. So in this case, I have 15 bullets total. When I reload, it gives me a new round of ammo for my gun, and also updates the amount of bullets I have total. Alright, so let's go ahead and dive in and see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. Alright, so let's go ahead and start by making the GUI for our ammo. To do that, you want to go under the starter GUI. Inside that folder, you're going to add a screen GUI. And then inside the screen GUI, you're going to add a text label. Once you add that text label, go ahead and rename it to ammo. And I just want to note here that this label is not inside of this frame. It's directly inside the screen GUI. All right, after you create the text label, you can go ahead and customize it to look however you want to. All I did for mine was make a few small changes. So I changed the background color to a light gray. And then for the text, it doesn't really matter what you have to start with because we're going to be changing it with code. So in the beginning, I just set it to ammo. But you're not actually going to see that because once the code runs, it's going to automatically change it. Okay, so once you make all the appearance changes that you want to do, we're actually going to change the visibility equal to false by unchecking this box here. And then on the script, whenever the player equips a tool, that's when we're going to make the GUI appear. Alright, so let's go ahead and head over to the script and see what we have to do. Okay, so on the script, this is the local script that's inside the gun. So wherever you have your gun, this is the script I'm talking about right here. So what we're going to do first is under the section that we have for objects and sound variables, we're going to create a couple more variables. So the first variable that we're going to create is a variable for the player. So we're going to say local player. And this is going to be equal to game dot players and then dot local player. Next, we're going to create a variable for the clip size. So we'll say local clip size. And this is going to be equal to 10. So this number right here should match the amount you set for ammo. So whatever value you put here, just put the same thing right here as well. What you can do just to make it a little bit easier is you can say gun.ammo.value. So that way if you ever change the value of the ammo in the future, it's going to automatically change it here as well. So the first thing we're going to do for this GUI is make it so that when the player equips the weapon, it's going to show up. And then when they unequip the weapon, it's going to disappear. So to do that, we're going to start under this section right here. And this is the section where we define what happens when the gun gets equipped. And what we're going to do is inside of this function right here, we're going to say player dot player GUI. And then we're going to access the screen GUI. And then inside the screen GUI, we're going to be accessing the ammo label. So we'll say dot ammo. And then to make it visible, we're going to say dot visible. And we're going to set that equal to true. Okay, so it's important to note here, if you're using other screen GUIs, then you probably want to rename this to something unique. Otherwise, it's going to get confused if you have multiple screen GUIs with the same name. All right, so let's go ahead and test this out and see if when I equip the weapon, the GUI appears. Okay, so right now I can see in the bottom right-hand corner that the ammo GUI is not there. So let's go ahead and try equipping the gun and see if it shows up. Okay, so I equipped the gun and it looks like it has not shown up yet. So let's take a look at the output and see what the issue is. And so here it says ammo is not a valid member of tool. And if I click on this right here, it shows me where the error appears. So the error appears on this line right here. And what might be happening is it's not giving enough time for this ammo value to load in. So what we can try to do to fix that is use a wait for child. So here on the script, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say gun. And then I'm going to say colon wait for child. And then inside the parentheses, I'm going to put ammo inside of quotation marks. And then on the outside, we'll still have dot and value. All right, so let's go ahead and try it now and see if that fixes the issue. Okay, so now when I equip the gun, the ammo GUI appears. So it seemed like that was the issue. The ammo value wasn't actually loaded in yet. So when I got to that line of code and tried to find that value that wasn't there yet, it kind of broke the script. So now that we have that part working, the next thing we want to do is have it so that whenever the player unequips the tool, the GUI disappears again. 
So just like we have a function that runs whenever the tool gets equipped, this one right here, we're going to create another function that will run whenever the tool gets unequipped. And we're just going to put that right below. So if you want to, you can create a section called unequip gun. And this is where we're going to put that function. So we're going to start with gun. And then this time we're going to say dot and unequip. And then we're going to connect this with a function. And then for this function, what we're going to do is start with player. We're going to access the player GUI. And then the screen GUI. And then the ammo label. And then here we're going to say dot visible. And to make it invisible again, we're just going to set that equal to false. All right, so let's go ahead and test this out. Okay, so when my player equips the gun, the GUI appears. And when the player unequips the gun, it disappears. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to the next step, which is going to be displaying the amount of ammo we have on the GUI. So on the script, we want to update this GUI whenever the value for the ammo changes. So whenever the player shoots the gun, the ammo value is going to change. And that's when we want to update the GUI. So to do that, we're going to say gun.ammo. And if you notice, I tried this before and it ran into an issue. So to prevent that issue from happening again, what I'm going to do is up here at the top, I'm going to define one more variable. So I'm going to say local ammo. And this is going to be equal to gun colon wait for child. And then here I'm going to be waiting for the ammo value. So now down here, instead of saying gun.ammo, I can just directly start with ammo. And this ammo right here is referring to the variable I created up here. So this is taking the gun and waiting for the ammo to load in. And the reason I'm doing that, like I mentioned before, is just to give it a chance to load in before we try to access it. So what I'm going to do is say ammo dot changed. So this event gets triggered whenever the value changes. Okay, so once the value changes when the player shoots the gun, we're going to say colon and connect. And we're going to connect this with a function. And inside this function, we're going to access the GUI by saying player dot player GUI dot screen GUI dot ammo. And then we're going to be changing the text. And then what we want to set for the text is the word ammo. I'm going to put a colon and then a space. And then I want to join that with some additional information. So I'm going to say dot dot. And then what I want to add to this is the value for the gun ammo, which is going to be ammo dot value. And then I need to convert this into a string so that I can combine it with this other string. So to do that, I'm just going to say to string and then put it inside of parentheses. So I need to add this line of code to one more spot in the script because when the player first equips the gun, I want it to show the actual amount of ammo. So I'm going to copy this line. And then the spot I need to add it is right inside of this function right here for the gun equipped. So right below this line, I'm just going to paste what we have. So let's go ahead and run the code and we'll check it out. Okay, so when I equip the weapon, the GUI appears now, and it appears with our updated text, which says ammo and the value for the ammo. And then whenever I shoot my weapon, you see it subtracts one for the ammo, and it updates it with the current ammo. And the nice thing of using the dot changed event is I don't have to do anything for the reload, because whenever I press R for reload, it's going to change the ammo value, and that's automatically going to update the, the GUI as well. So now that we have that working, the next thing we're going to do is update this GUI to show the total amount of bullets I have for this gun. So to display the total amount of ammo we have for this weapon, we're going to start by creating another int value for our gun. So go ahead and insert another int value into the gun, and then you're going to rename this one to max ammo. You can click on your max ammo int value, and for this value section, it's going to be the total amount of bullets you want for your gun. So I'm just keeping it at 15 for now, just for testing purposes but you can make this as large as you want to. So after you insert that int value and rename it to max ammo and also set your value for it, we're gonna head back to the script. And the first thing we're gonna do is head back to the bottom where we have this section right here. And we're gonna be adding some more information to this. So we're gonna say dot dot, and we're gonna be adding a forward slash. So what I'm gonna do is inside the quotation marks, I'm gonna put a space. 
I'll put the forward slash and then another space. Outside the quotation marks, I'm going to put two more dots. And then what we're going to be joining to this is gun dot max ammo dot value. If you want to, you can convert this into a variable like we did for the ammo. But while I was testing it, I didn't run into any issues. So I'm just going to keep it like this for now. If you're running into some issues like we saw before, then you may want to update it to this version right here. Okay, so once we have this value, we still need to convert it into a string. So what we're going to do is say to string and then put that inside of parentheses. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this and then paste it in the same spot we have above. So I'm just going to replace the old line with the new one. And let's go and test it out now and see if it's working. Okay, so now when I equip the gun, I see I have my clip size, which is 10, out of the total size, which is 15. The last thing we need to do for this ammo GUI is update the logic in this section right here. So the first thing we want to do is we only want to reload the gun if the current value for ammo is less than the clip size. So for example, if the player fires two bullets, they're going to have eight bullets, and that's less than the clip size, which is 10. So in that case, if they press R, we can reload their clip for them. But if they have 10 bullets and the clip size is also 10, then in that case, we don't want to reload the gun. So to do that, we're going to say if gun.ammo.value. And we want to check to make sure that's less than clip size. So we're going to say less than and clip size. In addition to it being less than clip size, we also need max ammo to be greater than zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to say and gun dot max ammo dot value and we want that to be greater than zero so obviously we can't reload the gun if we don't have any more bullets so if those two conditions are met if my current ammo is less than the clip size and I also have some bullets to work with then I'll go ahead and reload the gun so what I need to do is just add an end to this if statement and then add the word then right here so the next thing that we need to check for is to see if the gun has enough bullets to reload the clip completely or if we need to give the player a partial clip. So to do that, we're going to start with an if statement. And this if statement is going to say if gun.maxammo.value. And then what we're checking for is if we subtract this from clip size minus gun.ammo.value. And we want to make sure that this value is greater than or equal to zero. Let me go and stop and explain what's going on here. So in our case, clip size is equal to 10. And gun.ammo.value is equal to the current amount of ammo they have left in their clip. So as an example, let's say the player has 7 bullets left in their gun. Our clip size is equal to 10. So 10 minus 7 is going to be equal to 3, which is the amount of bullets we need to give the player to reload their clip. And what we're checking for is to make sure that we have 3 bullets left and the total amount of bullets we have for our gun. So if that's the case, and we have enough bullets to refill the clip, then what we're going to do, and I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of this line right here because we're going to change it to something else. So inside the statement here, we're going to say gun.maxammo.value is going to be equal to the current value for the max ammo. And then what we're going to do is subtract the amount of bullets that we give the player. And that is this statement right here. So clip size minus the current amount of bolts they have in their clip. And then to give them a refilled clip, what we're going to do is say gun.ammo.value. And we're going to set that equal to clip size. So this section right here is going to happen whenever we have enough total bolts to give the player a full clip. The other case would be if we're running low on ammo and we're not able to completely refill the clip, then we're just going to give a partial refill. And what we're going to do in this case is we're going to say gun.ammo.value. And this is going to be equal to the current value. And what we're going to do is just fill up the clip with whatever remaining bullets we have. So the remaining bullets that we have is going to be stored under game.maxammo.value. Since we're giving them the remaining bullets, we're going to say gun.maxammo.value. 
and we're going to set this equal to zero. And then since this value is changing after the ammo value, what we need to do is copy this sign right here and paste it down below here. All right, so let's go and run the code now and we can take a look. All right, so what I'm gonna do first is just fire one bullet. So now I have nine bullets left in my clip and when I press the reload button, it took one from my max ammo and put it inside my clip. If I try to reload with a full clip, then nothing happens. And now let me go and fire off some bullets. So when I have zero, it's gonna give me a full round. And now what I'm gonna do is get down to two bullets. And now you can see that my remaining bullets is equal to four. So the best I can do is take those four bullets and insert it into my clip to give me six. And that would be the case for our else statement. So whenever it gets to that case where I don't have enough bullets here to give me a full new clip, then that's what the else statement is for. If I do have enough for a full clip, that gets handled by this section right here. So let me go ahead and reload the gun and I'll show you what happens. Okay, so when I reload my clip, it's going to give me the remaining bullets. So now it's gonna say five because I shot off an extra bullet by accident. And now for the total bullets, it's equal to zero. So now if I don't have any more bullets and I try to reload, nothing happens. All right, so this video seems like it's getting kind of long, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop here for now. In this video, we set up the ammo GUI. In upcoming videos, we're gonna set up the health bar. And we're also gonna take a look at some different ways that we can refill our ammo over here. So for now, I hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for the next one.